So my next topic is non-surgical management and new adjuncts in diabetic foot ulcer management. So overall, how to treat a diabetic foot ulcer, including the newer uh, adjunct therapies which are coming in the market and which are not, some few of them are not available in India, but they may be in coming a few years. Management of diabetic foot ulcer can be discussed under following heading, microbiological control, room control, metabolic, vascular, mechanical, and educational control. First of all, microbiological control, which I have already told that the principles of antibiotic to be followed that the diabetic infection is usually polyprogal. So you need to give broad spectrum antibiotic for the prolonged duration. And because of poor immune response in the diabetic patient, the normal commensal, they may cause serious infection. Mind it with the pseudo mass infection, which has a poor prognosis, as well as diabetic foot also are concerned. This is also a uh, commensal. So because of the low body resistance, the commensal can become, they can cause serious infection. Now, once you get the wound, as a, you have to first of all clean the wound. Mind it, the normal saline is still the best. Usually what happens is that as soon as the ulcer comes, we start uh, cleaning it with the betadine, is the most commonly used. Uh, then we use hydrogen peroxide, then the uh, use hole also. Now the problem is with these, uh, all these solutions, iodine, that is betadine, hydrogen peroxide and use hole, they, they they kill the microorganism, sometimes positive, negative, and of viruses also. But simultaneously, they kill the eukaryotic cells. Also. Eukaryotic means normal cells of the wound or the surrounding area. So they prevent the wound growth also. So mind it. Don't keep applying every time the patient comes with the diabetic product. You will start going with the vitamin safkia, ointment, like No, you should wash it with the saline. You have to use this. Uh, there are specific indications for the povidone iodine, hydrogen peroxide, and usol also which should be followed. Then for cleaning solution, now electrolyzed water is also there. Uh, in USA, uh, there is a wa washi solution, the HOCl or hypochlorous acid there. It kills the gram positive, negative, anaerobic, etc. Then there are certain superoxide solution now, they are available in India as well, like Dermasin and Oxum, which is a combination of hydro hypochlorous acid and oxidized water solution. They, are, they have strong antibacterial activity and very low, eukaryotic cells toxicity, which I was telling you why one should not do the strong antiseptic over the wound. Then the DPOCL or diperoxychloric acid in the box seal. This is uh, also available now in India. Uh, this was a paper uh, published in uh, International Journal Lower Extremity Wounds. Fortunately, I was one of the principal investigators of this trial. And uh, this is the wound cleansing solution. It is found to be very effective. It has been derived from the hydrogen peroxide. Phase 2 trial has shown 92.8% healing rate and I was a part of the phase 3 clinical trial and now this molecule is available in form of wax seal and this is the way how it is to be uh, used. Next is the silver stream irrigation solution. You can hear it. Chronic wounds like diabetic, pressure, venous, and post-surgical ulcers, burns, etc. are difficult to heal due to planktonic bacteria, biofilm, slough tissue, and foreign material. Silver stream is a sure, swift, and safe mode of treatment of such wounds. Apply silver stream using a syringe with a 19 to 22 gauge needle by irrigating and covering the entire wound. The mechanical force of the stream created by the syringe together with the patented silver ion and menthol combination as well as tween 20 detergent create immediate penetration into the biofilm layers. The combination of silver ions and menthol disrupts the bacterial cell membrane. It condenses the DNA and stops cellular replication. The respiratory process is disrupted. And finally, it induces apoptosis. The tween 20 glycerol and menthol in silver stream help clean the debris, remove exudates and soothe the pain of the patient. Let the wound be exposed to the sprayed solution for 5 to 10 minutes. Clean the debris and dress the wound using gauze soaked with silver stream. Add a secondary occlusive dressing to keep the soaked gauze in wet condition. The dressing can be changed twice a day, once a day or thrice a week depending on the type of chronic wound and infection. be effective. Then after cleaning the wound, you have to debride the wound. 
And debridement means removal of the dead necrotic tissue. There are different types of debridement. So there are sharp means done with the scissors and scalpel in the OT. Blunt debridement is done with the curate, which is very important, a small instrument one podiatrist should have. And then the chemical debrider like uh, ointment with the urea, pepin, etc. And auto debridement one can get through the normal cell where the body self-defense mechanism take care of the debridement. It removes the dead necrotic tissue like hydrocolloid which we use and even plain gauze that also may cause the auto debridement. And there are certain new modalities like ultrasonic, hydrosurgical debridement, biodebridement which I am going to tell you now. First of all, ultrasonic uh, debridement. In this, the, there is ultrasonic formation and collapse of vapor bubbles who fragments and emulsify the dead necrotic tissue. This is the arabella which uh, I use in my center. So this is how it is used. On one side, there is a saline. Uh, this is this comes through the tubing and it is infused in this probe come uh, this instrument. There is formation of ultrasonic vapor bubbles which defragments the dead necrotic tissue or the slough. And this you can see on the right side is the pre debrided on the left side post debrided So the biofilm has been removed. Then comes the VersaJet, which has a hydrosurgical debridement technique. VersaJet is a handheld device used for surgical debridement in which a high velocity stream of sterile fluid jets across the operating window and into an evacuation tube. VersaJet's Venturi effect creates a localized vacuum. This holds and cuts tissue while aspirating debris from the site. At its lowest power levels, VersaJet will function mainly as a vacuum and remove little or no tissue with each pass. As the power increases, VersaJet removes a greater amount of necrotic tissue and bacteria. At the highest power levels, the VersaJet system will remove non-viable tissue very rapidly and tackle all but the hardest eschars while preserving as much healthy dermis as possible. Both these techniques which I just uh, shown in the video, they cause less damage to the normal uh, wound uh, base and they cause very good debridement without much blood loss. Then the another newer modality is, uh, you can say for India, not for USA, because maggot therapy is being used there. No doubt it's a very difficult, it's a maggots are of uh, Lucilia sericata green bottle fly. If I see they're escaping, should I take some of this stuff and just like tape around the edge a little more? Oh, if you notice one area where they're, they're escaping from, yeah. for sure. And this is the way how uh, this medicinal maggots are used. And this is for me. Okay, so what do I do with this? <laughs> no, okay, we have to fine. import from his American oh, maggots. No, 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 these no, are American maggots. Oh, there's one on my finger. We don't have these are maggots okay. there. Don't so try to sweep up as much as you can with the, with the gauze. There you go, you can squeeze it. Don't squish them now. Oh, yeah. They need to lift as much as you can. Are you going to get every bit in there? No, but you're going to get as many. Oh, look Is that a lot or no? Uh, okay. You're going to touch that? Okay. Do you want some gloves, Dr. Yeah, no. So you're going to go home and tell them the uh, Americans are very primitive? Yeah. <laughs> they are still relying on maggots. So that the maggots can sleep. I know, and honey. Bug therapy. Yeah, we're paying bug therapy. Bugs only one, two, three days. I give them three days. Three days. Three days. You know, really, I thought I was going to crush more. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to tape it as soon as you get there? Okay. So much less spray. Now, do you want them in both areas? Uh -huh. Okay, good job. No, they're, they're going to crawl and they're going to do whatever they want. And that's it. So you're leaving them a lot of space for them and you're leaving a lot of space for, for their thing. And with, with the rest, sometimes we try to get more. But Dr. Demi, you can take it home and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Another new modality is O2 misli. In this, uh, the cleaned and debrided wound is put in a jar or a canister 
and the wound is exposed to four cycles of 100% oxygen for five minutes, alternatively with the vapor of water and antibiotic for 10 minutes. This therapy is given twice a week and it has been found to be 200% more effective uh, in comparison to the standard care of the wounds. And uh, but this is not available in India. And then comes a VAC and NPWT or negative pressure wound therapy, which is now not a new modality. Now it has become a standard of care as far as chronic uh, ulcer healing is concerned, particularly diabetic foot ulcer. In this technique, uh, foam is put over the wound and through a tubing, it is connected uh, with a computerized therapy unit. There is a canister also. So whatever discharge comes, it is aspirated into the canister and uh, you can adjust the negative pressure with the help of this computerized unit. So the mechanism of the VAC is uh, it removes the exudate, it aspirated, then reduces that's why it reduces edema, promotes the perfusion because there is an increased granulation tissue formation and it draws the wound edges also together. You can see in the abdominal wound, the VAC has gone, uh, has reduced the size of the wound. So that also helps in early healing of the wound. This is how the uh, VAC is applied. This is a wound and the foam is put. And then the tubing is attached uh, through the uh, through the machine, and that is how it is used. In and now the next, uh, I would say, uh, type of uh, negative pressure wound therapy has come. The modification which is done by the KCI itself, known as NPWT I D. That means for repeated cleaning of the wound without needing of uh, without uh, removing the uh, this. Uh, dressing this thing works actually it has one inlet through which the normal saline is sprinkled over the wound normal saline re remains over the wound surface for 10 minutes around 70 ml of normal saline is put and then through this uh, tubing the that normal saline or whatever fluid is there it is aspirated so this type of cycles keep on going for 220 10 minutes you can say three and a half hour the negative pressure wound therapy is given. Then 10 minutes of dwell time is there when the normal saline remains over the, over the wound surface. So this is very effective and it has been found that the 30% fewer surgical debridements were needed in uh, Vera flow in comparison to normal or the usual negative pressure wound therapy. And the length of therapy also was reduced by 50%. And wound also closes twice as fast. So this is the new technique which is really good. Then comes the hyperbaric oxygen therapy. In the hyperbaric oxygen therapy, we put the patient inside a glass chamber. Uh, or uh, This is a monoplace chamber. Or number of patients simultaneously can sit on a very big uh, this uh, chamber. And that they are exposed to high pressure oxygen. That is 100% oxygen under 2 to 3 time atmospheric pressure. And this therapy is given for 90 to 120 minutes, 5 to 6 days a week. And total 20 to 40 treatments are given. And this much of pressurized oxygen inhalation causes increased tissue oxygen tension, increased fibroblast proliferation, so more granulation tissue formation, collagen deposition, increased angiogenesis, and bacteria killing. And in number of trials, they have proven that the improved wound healing has been noticed with the reduced rate of amputation. But mind it, in my uh, thinking, uh, this HVOT is effective in vascular ulcer, say when there is impending gangrene is there or when there is uh, gas gangrene, as I told you, one of the indications is there. And then uh, this graft failure is there. There it is effective, but it is not very effective in plant uh, neuropathic ulcer. Mind it, number of doctors they refer to the, for this HBOT unnecessarily, they are paying, but the patients are paying a lot of money for this HBOT. So neuropathic ulcer, in my opinion, there is no rule, but definitely in vascular or pre-gangrenous ulcer and the gas gangrene cases, you can advise for. Now comes the vascular control. So as I told in the, my last lecture, is whenever the, you see a diabetic foot ulcer patient, always put your fingers on the, or try to palpate all the peripheral vessels. If two or more than two arteries are not palpable, then go for ankle brachial index. If it is less than 0.9, go for the peripheral vascular Doppler. If there is abnormality, then go for the angiography. And on angiography, if you find less than 10 centimeter of block is there, then different modalities which can be used to open up the arteries are intra-arterial thrombolysis, endarterectomy, or percutaneous transluminant angioplasty, which may be in form of balloon angioplasty plus 10, which is most common. 
then sub intimal angioplasty laser angioplasty and rotablators for heart plaques can be done this is a conventional transluminal angioplasty uh, the uh, this wire guide wire is passed through the femoral artery and uh, it is negotiated through the blockage and then it is uh, balloon is inflated over it and if needed rises then uh, stent is put so just like coronary uh, angioplasty the peripheral vascular angioplasty is done and this case of external leg artery stenosis you can see before then after dilatation and this is after stent this is narrowed superficial femoral artery before dilatation after dilatation and if occlusion is less than 10 centimeters, then one can go for end arterectomy also. What is end arterectomy? In this, the artery is open and uh, the plug inside the artery is removed. And another and new modality has been uh, there, which has been passed on, uh, by FDA appro approval. It got FDA approval this year only in 2023. That is the system. It's a percutaneous transmural arterial bypass. That means it is less invasive through the femoral vein. One puts the these conduits, uh, biological conduits, before and after the blockage of the uh, artery, the femoral artery. So, so th this has been approved by the FDA. This is the new detour system has been there. Then high pressure uh, uh, intermittent pneumatic compression device is also there. Sometimes what happens? There's a patient uh, you cannot do angioplasty or bypass. His anatomy of the lower limb arteries are like that that you can't do either of the two. Or patient has a renal problem, so no angioplasty or, uh, can be done. Or patient cannot uh, tolerate or afford bypass surgery or angioplasty. Then we can go for this high-pressure pneumatic uh, compression device there. And these, these three uh, these uh, uh, bladders are there, which are wrapped around uh, the leg. Or there is a one sleeve also sometimes. Continuous sleeve is also there. And there is synchronized compression from above below. Say with the arteries, it compresses first of all the thigh uh, muscle, so the thigh arteries, and then so blood flows in a uh, distal manner. So different trials have also been done, and it has shown that the peak walking time has increased, and there is a reduction in wound surface also. So this is also one of the modality when uh, angioplasty or bypass can't be done. And if occlusion more than ten centimeter, we go for vascular bypass. As you see, if the blockage is there, this graft is put, and accordingly. So different peripheral bypasses, not unusual. And what is the medical management of peripheral vascular disease? You should also know this thing. Certain antiplatelet anti drugs like aspirin or clopidogrel should be given to the peripheral vascular disease patient. But nowadays, the resistance of aspirin clopidogrel has come up. That's why prasugrel or tica clopidogrel can be given. Then statins are very important part of the treatment. Celestazole, pentoxifilin. Celestazole is a vasodilator and pentoxifilin increases the uh, flexibility of RBC. Uh, in cases of post angioplasty, to, uh, for three days low molecular weight heparin should be given, followed by riva band, which is an oral uh, this anticoagulant. And the beta blockers, they reduce the heart rate, they reduce the blood pressure, or calcium channel blocker, they also cause uh, vasodilatation, so they can be given. Prostaglandin like iloprost can be given for critical limb ischemia cases when revascularization is not possible. Then anti-diabetics naturally to be given so that sugar remains controlled and peripheral vascular disease will remain under control. Regular exercise is important that increases the blood flow and healthy diet is part of, important part of the treatment. And avoid certain cold, uh, cold medicines like the pseudoephedrine containing cup syrup, etc. Now we move to the mechanical control offloading as I told you last time also that the patient should not walk because more he walks, is going to put pressure on the diabetic foot ulcer will lead to further in, increase in the infection. So the offloading may be in form of complete bed rest or one can use crutches or wheelchair. Then if there is ulcer in the this metatarsal region, then the front offloading shoes, which are in air, the uh, forefoot area. If it is in the midfoot area, then this type of uh, central offloading shoe. And if it is the heel area, then we give types of offloading shoe. And other devices of offloading are scotch cast boot, removal cast walker, or air cast walker, which can be used uh, by pushing air inside. There are air cells inside the this uh, wound, uh, uh, this sorry, shoe. So it gives the offloading. Now I come to the total contact cast, which Dr. Curry has very nicely mentioned. 
only thing you should remember the TCC total contact cast is applying just like a we apply uh, uh, this plaster around the foot or ankle uh, fractures. But the problem here is that you cannot see the ulcer, you cannot follow whether it is increasing, decreasing. And if there is a discharge from the ulcer, then also it is going to cause maceration and further problem can occur. And uh, sometimes there is ulcer formation, uh, small ulcer also made because of the warmth of the uh, this POP cast or uh, fiber glass, uh, fiber glass cast. So for that, my mentor, Dr. David Armstrong, who is a well-known podiatrist of the world, he has developed this ITCC, that is instant total contact cast. So what happens in this, the patient wears a removable, uh, wears a removable cast walker, and then a crepe bandage or a strap type of dressing is applied all around. So patient cannot open. If he opens to one, a doctor can come to know because then the com compliance will be uh, taken care of. Otherwise, what happens that if you ask the patient to wear only removal cast walker for offloading the foot, then he may open it in the night and then again wear it. So the exact uh, or the full uh, advantage of uh, offloading may not be there. So with this ITCC, these side effects of uh, TCC uh, may not be there because one needs expertise also to apply TCC. So all these things can be taken care by the ITCC. Now, low-level laser therapy, I have been using it, but it's not very effective. They say that the this laser stimulates uh, or causes activation of microcirculation, so helps in oxygen transport, and it stimulates the macrophages also, which is the micro, micro. This is the wound before and after low-level laser therapy. Then comes the growth factors. They are the naturally occurring protein which are capable of stimulating cellular proliferation and cellular differentiation. Number of seven uh, platelet derived growth factors are there. The, these two are more important. USFD has approved so far only platelet derived growth factor, other is epidermal growth factor. This is the example Plarmin is PDGF and Regen D is a EDGF, that is epidermal growth factor. And in the studies, it has, they have shown that they heal the wound in significantly less time and with less scar tissue formation in comparison to the control. But in the Indian trial, one of the trials which has been done by Raj Lakshmi Gope, she has found that if you use the combination of both, then the chances uh, of healing the ulcer is much more. And this was another trial done by J.V. Hardika. And he has shown that the complete wound healing has been seen in more number of patients when the plasmin was used or the platelet derived growth factor in comparison to the placebo. Similarly, here also see the average time duration taken for healing was also shorter and statistically significant in the plasmin. The upper one is the plasmin graph and lower is in the placebo. This is a wound before and after use of uh, the recombinant platelet derived growth factor BV type. This is before and after two months of plasmin. Now comes the ozone therapy. I have been using this also at my clinic. Actually, ozone is an active uh, oxygen, triatomic allotrope of oxygen, which is formed by recombination of uh, oxygen atoms. It's a colorless, pungent, other gas, but very strong oxidant. More than 3,000 times powerful disinfectant chlorine. It disinfects, oxidizes, deodorizes, and decolorizes decolor also. This is the patient which I've been treating. And the technique is known as bagging. In the bagging, we apply a plastic bag around the uh, foot where there is a wound. And then the outlet from the uh, ozone generator a pipe is put on the upper side, to the upper side, and it is tightly secured so that it does not leak out. The therapy is given for 10 to 30 minutes. And uh, be sure that the uh, this ozone should not leak outside. And the, a trial has been done which has shown that the significant high rate of complete wound closure was shown with this group, ozone group. Then comes the platelet rich plasma. You might be knowing PRP gel application is being used in the uh, this osteoarthritis and in the cornea and different things also. But in the wound care also, we have been using it. As we know that the platelets, they contain components and properties for wound healing and plasma contains fibrin matrix. So what in the is this procedure around 5 to 30 ml of the patient blood is taken and it is centrifuged after mixing certain reagent like vitamin C or thrombin, which reactivate or which activates platelet and plasma and makes a gel consistency. And this is applied over the wound and it, is, it was found to be very effective in comparison to uh, control uh, management. Sometimes what happens that uh, the wound has healed, but the overlying skin, the epidermis, dermis has not come. In that condition, 
you have to use some layer to put it off. For that, we have to use the skin grafting. As you can see on this side, the wound has healed. There is a good granulation tissue, but it is very big. So it, it will take more time and more it remains open. There are more chances that it is going to be get reinfected at any problem. So we take a skin graft from the other part of the body and apply over it. So the skin graft can be split thickness, full thickness, or composite graft. But what happens is that sometimes patient is not willing for this surgery that already a ulcer is there. And they say, doctor, it is going to produce another ulcer. Sometimes the skin is not, if the ulcer is big and the patient does not have enough skin on the buttocks or from where, whatever, from wherever patient or the doctor want to take the this uh, skin graft. In that condition, we have certain artificial skin substitute. They are not a bioengineered alternative tissue. They may be divided into two. One is the living tissue, another is the bioactive agent. Living tissue are like epigraft, dermagraft, laser skin, vivoderm, epicell, or cell, etc. And in bioactive, we have integra. Uh, first of all, let me tell you about the epigraft, which is not available in India, but it is uh, derived from the foreskin of newborn and it is a bioengineered epidermis plus dermis graft. It helps in the healing of the uh, non-healing wounds. And this is the Integra which we have in India now. It's a bilayer wound matrix. But this and metri, uh, Metriderm, these both are available in India. But both of them need the second step of superficial skin grafting. That is the only problem. But definitely for small wounds, you don't need the SSG to be put. And this is how in the first sitting, the Integra is put. This is a, a tissue which has healed, and subsequently, as SSG is put, and this is the final healing of the wound. The metriderm is a bovine dermal matrix, which also needs the second step of SSG if the wound is big. It is used for the full thickness wounds and for the exposed tendon. Mind it, whenever in the diabetic foot ulcer, if the tendon is exposed, it's very difficult to get granulation tissue over it, and it gets easily necros and which leads to chronicity of the wound. So there, if you use this metriderm, it is definitely, or most of the time, if infection can be taken control, then it may be effective. A trial was done where both Integra and metriderm were tried, and it was seen that the metriderm was better in terms of skin elasticity and pliability in, than Integra thin. So wherever there is a joint, etc., this metriderm can be a better choice. Then Salutom, this is also a new modality. It is an automated epidermal harvesting system in which no anesthesia is needed. The harvester is positioned onto the donor site and a combination of gentle warmth and negative pressure is used to raise the epidermal microdomes. And over these microdomes, the tagatum dressing is put and they are harvested. And this is applied over the wound. So this is very simple technique for the small wound like this wound over the pinna of the ear. This is effective. Then another is the recombinant granulocyte colony stimulating factor. This was also a very earlier, it came in the limelight, but uh, unfortunately it is not so effective. It is costly also and the different trials have shown the controversy results also. So not being used regularly. And as I told you, when surgical intervention like angioplasty or peripheral bypass fails, or if it is not possible because of my reason, which I enumerated you, we can do the stem cell therapy also. So source of stem cells are autologous mesenchymal stem cell or allogenic. That means from the others. Autologous means from the same patient. So this is a mechanism which I've been doing in BLK Max. Autologous stem cells are taken from the bone marrow of the patient. They are developed in the laboratory and then they are injected. Half of them are injected in the calf muscles and half of them are injected around the perimund area. And diabetic foot ulcers were found to uh, heal 90% better uh, or in the 90% of the cases. So there have been certain trials also. So again, this is reserved only for the uh, vascular ulcer where angioplasty or bypass is not possible. Insurance have started uh, this cost around 1,95,000. Yesterday only, uh, tomorrow, uh, on Monday, I'm going to do uh, stem cell therapy. And it costs one like ninety five thousand. If the weight of the patient is more than sixty two kg, then you have to give two hundred million million camas stem cell. And if it is less than that, you have to give one fifty. They cost around two lakh rupees, then one lakh rupee hospital charges. So it's a very costly treatment. But insurance company have started uh, agreeing for it uh, if there is uh, angioplasty failure or bypass failure is there, peripheral bypass failure is there. And lately, the FTA has also approved a first topical gene therapy. This is a new thing. 
which has come up by the name of Yjuvac. This has been used in the treatment of wounds in patients with DEB. That is a dystrophic epidermal lysis bullosa, which is a serious genetic skin disorder. This has been lately approved by FDA. Only this May 2023. And then uh, Diabetic Food India has also introduced a new uh, fluorescence camera by uh, which works with the AI technology, the artificial intelligence technology. It comes by the name of Illuminate Imaging Device. It is a new device and technology for <coughs> detecting bacterial infection and its gram type in diabetic food ulcer. With the camera, you can find out if there is gram negative bacteria, gram positive, and accordingly you can decide about the antibiotic. No doubt, you can't compare with the standard culture sensitivity because you do not get sensitivity out of it. And uh, but with the trial, it has been shown that uh, there is was 99.24 percent sensitivity and 82.35 specificity with that of the gold standard culture test. This is the mechanism how it works. These are different features, and you can see this is a wound, and biofilm is, can be seen in the form of this green color. Green means gram negative bacteria. As you can see, this is a heel wound is there. So, with the camera, eliminate camera shows that this is a red, red means gram positive bacteria, and green means gram negative, and red means gram positive bacteria. And this is the example of pseudo venous infected wounds. This is a picture with the eliminate. And here also you can see the gram positive, gram negative, and accordingly you can decide whether you need an antibiotic to be given or not. As I was telling that the diabetic foot ulcer, all diabetic foot ulcer patients should not be given antibiotic, provided there are signs symptoms of acute infection. So with this camera also you can find out if there is an infection or not. If there is not infection, then don't give antibiotic. This is a utility, I think, because at my tertiary level, I don't find it much more uh, important because I do not come to know about the sensitivity. Okay, you came to know gram positive, then you are giving the thing by empirical way. So this is a bit costlier, costing four to five lakh rupees. But if to rule out the diabetic foot ulcer infection, it is good. That's all for me in this lecture.